Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of COD. On this episode, I'll be discussing hidden figures and my cocktail is the daiquiri. It's time for the COD. Let's get this started. Okay, so the daiquiri, uh, it's a Cuban drink. That's what I read up on. And I've never made a daiquiri before, so this is gonna be my first time. Let's hope that it comes out nice. This is a proper daiquiri, okay? And um, it consists of rum, white rum. It consists of lime juice and sugar syrup, sweet syrup, simple syrup. That's what it is, okay? So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to juice these limes. Growing up, when I was younger, if we went anywhere to like the store or like to a fair or something like that, and they had, I don't know, like sherbet or popsicles or any sort of candy. Oh, wow, this is like, okay, put your back into it, D. Put your back into it. If they had any sort of like flavored candy or ice cream or sherbet or anything like that, and the flavor that they had was lime, I was all in. You know what? These lamps should have been a little bit at room temperature. I think they're so cold that I just, I can't even squeeze the juice out. This is making me look like I don't go to the gym. <laughs> I'm left handed. I'm left handed. Maybe I'll be better with my left hand. No. It's still hard. Put your back into it. I try to be all fancy and, and and next time if I do a cocktail and it calls for like lime juice, I'm either gonna pre-do it so I don't look like a wuss or I'm just gonna buy it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> lime juice. Woohoo! Garbage. My hands. So let's make this daiquiri. Finally. You take a shaker. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to make the daiquiri because I got this brand new shaker and I wanted to use it like right away. And I always think that people look like people look really, really cool whenever they are making cocktails and they're just there like shaking about, shaking about. It just looks really impressive. So if I learn how to make this drink and it's good, then I can make it for my friends and I just look like, you know, the Dandata. Did I really just say that? Did I really just say Dandata? I would look cool. I'll look awesome. So here we go. Ice in the shaker. We're gonna do two ounces of white rum. I do not wanna be overdosing on this. Boom, two ounces. An ounce of lemon juice. I said lemon juice, it's lime juice, guys. Obviously, you know that because you just saw me struggle. An ounce of lime. And then we're going to do three fourths of an ounce of simple syrup. And now, here comes the fun part. <laughs> just shake. Shake, shake, shake. Woo oh, wow. That makes your hands really, really cold. Wow. Okay, one more shake. Here we go. Let's taste it. What is with me today? How come I feel like the weakest person in the world? Oh, this is just like really like messing up my cool card. It looks good. It smells good. That's all? Wow, that's a little bit. Let's try. That is good. Okay. So, hidden figures. This is really, really good. Yeah. That is nice. That is really, really nice. So, Hidden Figures is a true story about um, these African-American women who played a pivotal role while working in the NASA space program back in the Dizzy. 
And it stars Tarazi P. Henson, it stars Octavia Spencer, it stars Janelle Monet and Kevin Costner. And when this movie was like in the previews and so on like that, the trailers, I was in. I was I was fully committed, I was fully signed up, and I was going to be there when the movie came out, and I was there when the movie came out. This is one of those like feel-good movies. This is one of those movies that that really warms your heart. It makes you feel so warm inside, and it was a perfect feeling to have because it snowed the day that I went to see this film. I needed a movie that was just gonna warm me up. It was just gonna warm my cockles. And this is what Hit of Vegas did. Let me tell you something. Octavia Spencer, you are my girl. I like anything that Octavia Spencer is in, okay? She's like, it's something about her. I'm, I'm gonna try to sound professional. I'm gonna try and sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't, but you know, just play with me, roll along. I think I read somewhere where it's like, uh, you can only find comedy through tragedy. And so with um, with Octavia, I feel like there's a really fine line that she walked really, really well. Tarazi P. Henson, she was good. She was. It was good to see her play something that wasn't cookie-esque. She says cookie stole her career or cookie stole her identity. Now, this is like completely far left from what I've ever seen Taraji P. Henson play. And, and she played it really, really well. Like, all around, everybody was really, really good. Kevin Costner was good, as always. Kevin Costner is always good. But Octavia, I gotta go back to this girl. What do you call a pimp? What do you call a female pimp? You can write it in the comments below if you know what a female pimp is called. A madam. That's what it is. A madam. If there was ever anyone to be a madam in, in NASA, it was the character that Octavia Spencer played, okay? She had those African-American ladies, they were computers, okay? Because by that, in those days, they didn't have computers. They had people to compute, and they were called computers. And she had a whole, like, team of women that she, that she, um, you know, not controlled, but she led. And... She was like the pimp. Like, people come in and say, I need this job done. She's like, my girls can do it. You want this? I, I give you her. You want this? I give you her. I got a girl that can do it. My girls can do it. That was Octavia the entire movie. I mean, I don't know how many times she said that, but I feel like she said it about 20, 100 times in the entire film. That scene where... Octavia, I'm talking to you if you're watching this, okay? That scene where you walk down the halls and you got your girl squad behind you and you're all like coming down in slow motion. Pimpstress, okay? Pimpstress. Lived for it. Loved it. Yeah, I did. All in all, the movie was good. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying my best not to like, to like tell you, I'm trying my best to tell you to go see this film and how good the film is without giving you any spoil spoiler alerts. This is like hitting me. It was very clean though. It was very like, I don't think I heard anyone curse at all. I mean, there was a part when Tarazi got really, really mad. She like told it like it was, but she didn't cuss. And I don't think I heard anybody cuss. Maybe that's because they wanted it to be more of a family film or whatever, you know? But even Kevin Costner, who's supposed to be like the hardball, like take no nonsense, he didn't cuss either. And I was just thinking, you know, like in Tarazi's character, she gets pushed into like an environment where it's all men. And in environments like that, I never really, I never really, I would think that in an all-male environment, they would have some sort of way that they act, a behavior that would be common for them. And now that a woman has come into this environment, it would be a little bit inappropriate. But I didn't see them acting the way they would normally act and then her being reacting to the inappropriateness 
of the situation. Am I saying real words? Wow. I say all that to say that the movie was really, really clean. It was really, really, it was, it was just really clean. I felt like I was watching Akilah and the Bee. And maybe that's a good thing, you know? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I really enjoyed this film, but it did feel a little Akilah and the Bee. And I had to look back and like read the credits on online when I got home to find out if it was done by Disney because it felt Disney. It wasn't, but it felt Disney. I digress. Um, do I really digress? It, did I use that right? Maybe this isn't a good idea to have alcohol when I'm trying to get my point across, but this is nice. I'm going to make myself another one. Oh no, I think you should go see this film. I did, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. The only time I didn't enjoy myself was when people were getting up to go use the bathroom. I literally think that movie theaters need to like have someone at the front of the screen right before the movie starts and say, does anybody need to go use a bathroom? I mean, come on now, you're adults. Halfway through the film, 10 minutes into the film, you gotta get up and go use the bathroom. I mean, really? And I'm trying to watch, I'm trying to watch these people shoot a rocket into space and I can't because I'm looking at the back of your head. Like, come on now. My vent's over, back to the movie. It was good. Hidden figures. Go see it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. And if you want to find out when I do more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below.